Hey everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. I'm just going to come on real quick and do a... Eh, I don't know if you'd call it a tutorial necessarily. I'm sure there's lots of tutorials out there. I'm going to do this faceted heart. Alright. So, I've got this one right here that is not baked yet. And I'm going to do another one just like it. But I'll put... I've got two different colors of Pearl X powders out here. I've got the iridescent violet. Yeah. I'm sorry for the glare. And then I've got, um, this is the macro pearl. And the difference between the macro colors and the micro colors is the size of the mica flake. So this has a little larger micro, micro flake, mica flake. I'll get it right in a second. So that it sparkles just a little bit more. Um, instead of just being pearly. If that makes any sense. The heart actually has um, a different color of the macro pearl. So that it has just a little bit of sparkle. It actually has several different colors on there. But... Alright, so that's what I'm going to do. What you're going to need is your clay of choice and for carving you want a less sticky a little bit firmer clay is going to give you the best uh, let's say the easiest result I've got a silver plated head pin since I'm out of silver plated wire <laughs> to make the bail at the top now if you wanted to do one that's a connector piece where you have a bail at the top and at the bottom, you just need two head pins. So we're going to do that first, if I can find my pliers. And I've showed this before. Get up on your pliers about as big around as you're going to want your bail to be. Um, if I was using wire, I'd be choked up on my pliers just a little bit more. But since I have a head pin and limited length. I'm going to fold down, hold my pliers a little more firmly, cross the legs, turn it over in my pliers, and wow, so much for trying to do stuff looking in the camera. There you go, where I've got two loops. I usually do three, but I don't have enough length to do that. Then I'm going to come underneath it, cross it again. This is some pretty stout wire, which is a good thing. And then I'm just going to twist, like two twists. You want to leave your little legs. Those are going to be your like your little anchor bolts inside the... You can even leave the little end on, but I usually cut it off. <coughs> there we go. Okay. We'll set that aside. Now, this was good in condition <laughs> last night. Um, just work it just a tiny little bit. No, sorry, I'm so close. I'm as backed up on my camera as I can be, so. I'm not really needing to condition it again as much as warm it up. Set here and got a little stiff. I'm just going to roll it in a ball. Okay. And I'm sorry, I should have said the other thing you're going to need is just something round into your paintbrush would work. Um, I'm going to pinch one end. And I have a tutorial on uh, making pretty hearts. 
and then I'm going to flatten the other end so that we've got a kind of strange rain, uh, raindrop. Alright, and then I'm going to round these edges just a little bit. Now since we're going to be carving on this, by no means does it need to be anywhere near perfect. Decide what your center is here. And just rock your, your tool back and forth. Right. Now since hearts can be so many different shapes and you can do whatever shape your little heart <coughs> desires. Longer, rounder, asymmetrical. More pointed at the bottom, less. Of course, other shapes. Doesn't have to be a heart, obviously. plans to do a moon like this shortly. Alright. There we go. Now you can choose to put your bale in at this point, but um, I don't usually do that. I usually carve it first. Right, let's do a little No, I'm not really trying to make them look alike. Just like that little squatty or more compact. Now, I've got my clay blade. You can do this with a razor blade. And probably with a little bit more difficulty with an X-Acto knife or with a craft knife. What you need is to be able to keep your blade pretty flat against the surface that you're carving on. And I usually start at my fattest, at my thickest, widest area. And you don't want to go very deep, but enough to be good definition. And about yay size, a little longer than a quarter of an inch maybe probably about the same width it's not an exact science sometimes they wind up being longer shorter and then you just keep going there's no pattern to it there's no right or wrong But keep your blade flat. You don't want to be cutting down into the piece. Because then you won't wind up with a heart shape at the end. So usually I'll start like this and I'll do half of one side. And then I'll flip it over and do this same half of the other side so that I'm holding on to one uncarved piece at the beginning and as you can see that piece was a lot longer and yes I can hear my mother right now saying don't cut towards yourself but you're really putting very little pressure there we go it's starting to look really good the hardest parts are going to be right here in your uh, uh -huh.
in your little valley right here is going to be your hardest part. That's why I try to do half so that I'm cutting towards the uncarved half here so that all of this ugliness right here will get carved away. So now I can flip it over and go from the other direction. And you'll just keep continuing on. And of course, you can do beads this way. As I said, other shapes. glance around make sure there's nowhere that I missed now you usually would think that you would want your tip to have a point on it but really it gives a better faceted look if it doesn't have that point if it has some sort of chiseled tip there Now what you're going to do is from the top, I usually would use my craft knife, but just cut yourself a little slit, and take the bail, and then wish that my hands weren't a foot away from me to try to video this. <laughs> Get that down in there to the depth you want and about where you want it. And then I'm going to just gently give that a squeeze. Now you can take your your uh, knitting needle, your paintbrush, whatever you're using, and just roll over your incision. You want to bring that clay all back together. And if you're worried about your bale coming out, you can put just a little bit of liquid Sculpey down in the hole. Right. And there you've got another little faceted heart. And as I said, see, they're both completely different. And I could continue to work this to deepen this valley on the front just a little bit. It's hard to see with this unusual color and I was going to say that at the beginning this is a Sculpey 3 color from um, from the sample pack I think the 24 color sample pack um, from years <laughs> from years ago yeah it's been in my box for years so again I don't know what the color is actually called but after this many years, it kind of looks like old eraser. That's what I t told my husband. Finally dawned on me what the color looks like. It looks like old eraser. You know, not when a pink eraser is new, but when it's old and dried out. It's that color. So now I'm going to take these little, all my little cuts. And I'm sorry if you can see writing through my paper that I'm working on. It's a piece of, um, you know, it's the label off of peel off labels shipping labels it's the backing so it's non-stick okay so I've got all those little scraps and I just kind of stuck them together and I'm just gonna roll them into a little tighter ball
you see where you can still see the, the individual pieces a little bit they're not completely melted together or melded together and I'm going to take both of these one from the first heart and one from the second one and uh, I'll ream a hole through these and be bake them at the same time ba -ba -ba -ba. and then when I antique them put a little red or a little some sort of uh, color wash on them they'll um, I'm hoping maybe look like some old um, uh, rose petal beads if I do the right color on them we'll see but right now we're gonna take let's start with the macro as you can see what I started out with is I covered the whole piece and then went back and sanded the edges to get the underneath color to come back out so this was this was done the exact same way just using different colors and this is just an old ratty paintbrush and I'm sorry I'm calling you names paintbrush um, with stiff bristles and I like and I like that for uh, for pearl X powders as long as you have a light touch you won't gouge you play and it's funny I started to use the silver on this because I wanted a little more opaque color on it and I'm not sure I'm going to like that macro. I'll try something else on that one. And this is the Interference Violet, which is a pearl base that's got a violet, of course, iridescence to it. And as you can see, you can see that violet iridescence immediately. Now being that these colors are more transparent than when I used the bronze that I used on the other one, uh, you can choose not to sand them. You can just let that color, of course you can choose not to sand them no matter what color you put on there. You can paint them after or before they're baked. I know some people paint um, before baking. So, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be off frame. So there's the interference violet on there. Love how it shows off that faceting. See, isn't that going to be pretty? And then I wipe my hands. I don't want interference violet all over the next one. I just smack my paintbrush on the edge of my trash can. Alright. Alright, I'm going to go back with my gut instinct on this one. Whoa, don't hit the camera. Delicate balance. Alright. 
day. Now, something to show through when we sand. Alright. These are going to... <laughs> now y'all know why I'm always apologizing for my hands. Because I can't do it without getting messy. Or glittery or... into the oven they'll go and I'll be right back all right here are the two pieces out of the oven the one we did with the uh, the one I did with the interference violet and as you can see that's a very transparent um, one of the prolex powders in other words I can still see the color of the bead through it very easily so it didn't really change the color of the clay so this one you know I can decide whether or not to sand on it and when I say sand that's really <laughs> that's really stretching it a bit um, I'll start with the silver one just because it's going to be easier for you to see. I'm not really sanding the clay. I'm just knocking the pearl X off the high points. And of course it's up to you how much or how little um, you take off. thinking about your color combo is something that's that's worth it on one of these because you want enough contrast that you're going to be able to see it as is pretty evident with the other one Sorry, I always save the, anytime Hubby and I go up to Subway to get a sandwich. We always bring them home to eat them, so always save the napkins. <laughs> so that's the look we're going to get with this pink and silver. I really, really like it. And it, y'all probably heard me say a hundred times, I'm not really... I'm not really a pink girl. I'm not a... It's funny, I, I have only sisters. So you'd think I'd be a bit more of a girly girl, but... N none of us are. <laughs> you know, in your head, you immediately think I was the tomboy, but then again, I think we all are. None of us are very girly. <laughs> Of course, now, you know, my family is just guys, so I guess it uh, worked out to me in my favor somehow. Alright, this one, I'm not sure I'm going to do any sanding on this one. I don't know, let's see, I can always go back and add more if I want to. I'm just not sure you're going to be able to tell that it's been sanded. Other than it just knocking the pearl off on these, this one, or knocking the iridescence off. Yeah, I think I'm not going to sand this one. So, one one way, and one the other. And I am so sorry. It's probably quite a bit better. I hadn't uh, adjusted my color, and I apologize for that way too much yellow. I wondered why that silver looked so ick. So. 
Now, I'll go and put a, uh, I don't know if I'll put a gloss. I may just put a satin finish on this one. See what, see what that looks like. This one I'll definitely put a gloss finish on to bring out that shimmer and the pink. And you can, of course, no matter what I do, start it out clean. Um, do any sort of antiquing or patina. As you can see, I added some patina to this one. So, these are going to turn out really cute, I'm hoping. Um, stay tuned on that. I'll probably do that in a finished video later. So, alright. Faceted hearts. That's what I've got for today. Here are the two scrap beads I made from the, and I'm going to have silver all over them. Um, and these are not at all round, and I did that intentionally. I, I'm wanting them to look like um, some vintage rose petal beads. So I'm going to um, give them an antiquing of this. Uh, oh, it's a lizard in crimson uh, by Americana. So uh, we'll see what those turn out like. All right, me and my silver fingers. And uh, that's it for today. I shall holler at y'all later. Bye now.